Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Glitched Velocity. I'm your host Vazahat and today in this video, I'm going to show you how to successfully compile an Android app bundle or generate an Android application with the help of Android Studio using Coppercube Client Source. So without further ado, let's jump right into the topic. Assuming that you already know how to install Android Studio to your system and if you don't know how to install it, you can go ahead and watch hundreds of video tutorials available on YouTube. So open your Android Studio. We probably don't need the Java JDK program because Android Studio comes with an embedded JDK program. But I will recommend you to install the standalone version as well. So first we need to open our Coppercube client source in our Android Studio and in order to do that we need our source Android for our Coppercube project. So as you can see on my desktop I have this source android.7zip file and you can only get it from the studio version of Coppercube which will provide you Android client source, Windows client source and Mac client source. You can purchase the professional or studio edition from my website neophyte.cf from our affiliated links and you can also use our code glitched valo to get additional 10% off on your purchase. So let me just extract the source folder on my desktop from the 7-zip archive and then we are going to open that source in our android studio so navigate to your source folder you can see it shows with an android logo which means it is an android project so i'm gonna hit ok here and it will load the project in my android studio you can see the status bar here whatever it is doing you will see here and it says you can simply skip the tips if you don't want it and now we have our very first error here which is unsupported gradle the project uses gradle 2.14.1 which is incompatible with android studio 2021.3 and the possible solutions are upgrade gradle wrapper to 3.0 version and re-import the project you can either click this button here or you can go to your file project structure and then specify the gradle version that you want to use and as you can see we have these gradle versions up to 8.0 and you can if you want you can select the latest one but i will suggest you to go with the suggestions that it gives you it might ask you to upgrade your gradle version a few more and more times so simply click this upgrade gradle wrapper to 3.0 version and re-import the project and we'll start doing its stuff and then it will again ask us to upgrade our gradle 3.0 to gradle 4.8 version so simply click this and it will start downloading some library files from repositories and now it will throw us an another error which is could not initialize class com.android.repository.api.repo-manager and in order to fix this error what you have to do is simply go to gradle scripts drop down here and you will notice two files here build.gradle and build.gradle these two files are not same because the first one build.gradle is for your project and the second one is for your application or the module. So in order to fix this issue, you need to select build.gradle for your project. So double click it and you will be provided with something like this. Build script and repository section here. All projects and repository section here. So we need to add two more repositories in our repository section. First one is Google and second one is maven central and then we are going to simply copy it from here and paste it in all project repositories as well and we still have one error as you can see there is one error and two warnings we can ignore the warning messages but we need to fix the errors so you can see in the dependencies 
we have this red line under this class path and it says we are using com.android.tools.build gradle 2.2.0 and we need to use something like 7.3.1 version of the gradle and then we are going to try again syncing or build.gradle file and it will start downloading some more libraries or files and you can see the status here and it also throws another error that minimum support gradle version is 7.4 current version is 4.8 and we again have to upgrade our gradle version to 7.4 so simply click this button or the suggestion that it gives you it will start downloading some files again and try to build the project again and this time i assume it will build successfully without any errors so we have to just wait for the project to build you can see the status here it is configuring the project now it is downloading some files and it will take some time depending on your internet speed and your hardware specifications so just wait for a moment until it is building the project and it is preparing kotlin build script model and downloading and downloading all the stuff it will just take some moment to build the project successfully all we have to do is just wait wait and wait and yeah build is successful in one minute nine second it also so shows that we are using some depreciated gradle features but we can ignore these warnings as they are not errors and now as our project is built successfully we need to test our application by running them in our android emulator so simply click this run app to run them in our android virtual device and as soon as i click this run app you will see this error the apk for your currently selected variant cannot be signed please specify signing configuration for this variant release and we need to fix it and we can either create a new key store file by providing a new release key here or key store file and we can either use debug profile so i'm gonna use the debug profile so go to default configuration you can change your application id application id suffix version code version name everything here but we are going to change the signing config with the debug signing config and hit apply and simply click ok button here and then run the application and it will start the emulator and it will probably throw us an error and the error is source option 5 is no longer supported use 6 or later and in order to fix this error we need to specify or change our java version in our build.gradle for the application so let me just minimize the emulator and as you can see this time we have to select build.gradle file for the module or for the application select build.gradle for the module and then simply come down here and change the java version version 1 5 to version 11 you can use version 8 as well or some other version but i will prefer 11 and then we are going to change the minimum target sdk version to 33 and we also need to change the compiled sdk version as well to 33 you can also change the build tool version if you want and you can also change these settings from your project structure as well so if you go to file and project structure and then go to project then you can change the gradle version and android gradle version and then in your 
properties you can change the compile sdk version build tools version and source compatibility target compatibility and other issues so you don't have to worry about that i have already changed them in our build.gradle for the application or the module file here and now let's just try syncing it so click this sync now button and it will start syncing and build is successful now let's just try running the application again and now it shows another error which is manifest merger failed android exported needs to be explicitly specified for element blah 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 and in order to fix this issue of android exported all you have to do is go to this app drop down here and then go to manifests folder open android manifest.xml and scroll down to the activity tag under your android label app name to replace enter this android exported is equal to true and simply run the application again and this time it will start building the application but will show you some warnings you can ignore the warnings as you can see it shows us 53 warnings as most of these warnings are some depreciated api warnings so we can ignore them as long as our application is working fine without any issues so just wait until it is building the application once the application is built successfully it will automatically launch the emulator as you can see and it will automatically run the application as well in the emulator and as you can see it launches the application in the emulator but you might see that this cube mesh is blown out with the lighting and the background is just plain white and that's because the project uses a very old copper cube project file and in order to fix that simply go to your source folder and then in app then go to source again then main then assets and def.ccb open it in your copper cube editor this is the copper cube project file that our android project is using as you can see it has this cube mesh with very old texture so we can simply delete it and create a new cube mesh we can delete the default skybox and use this skybox blue and save the application by pressing ctrl s close it go to your android studio project again minimize this and terminate and restart or rebuild the application and it will ask you to terminate the application so you can terminate the application through the dialog box that pops up i have disabled that dialog box so it won't pop up anymore so as you can see we have our copper cube project running in our android virtual device or the android emulator so this is how you can generate an android application using android studio with the android client source of copper cube but what about the android app bundle so in order to create android app bundles all you have to do is go to build and then build bundles slash apks and click this build bundle button and it will start building the android app bundle file just wait for a moment until it's built and once the android app bundle is generated you can click this locate button and it will show you this app release.aab you can now grab this file and upload it to your google play console so that you can publish it to the play store so yep that's how you can generate application and android app bundles you can also create your own java classes in your 
Java folder and then go to com mbarer.coppercube player. And as you can already see, it has all the necessary classes that Coppercube uses. For example, the action classes, behavior classes, scene node classes, and all. And here we have our main activity, which is Coppercube player activity.java. You can also create your own classes and incorporate them with the Coppercube game engine or the Coppercube Android game. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you can successfully compile Android application and Android app bundles. Hope you like the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you see something else in your Android Studio console, some errors that this video does not cover, then you can write down the error code in the comments down below or mention what error you are getting in your console and I will try to answer and provide you a solution for that particular error. So that's all for today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Take care.